Hello and welcome back to another PriceCP Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to learn more about touch events. Specifically, we're going to learn how to determine if who is touching our part and whether the person touching our part is a humanoid, which, is, which means it's a player, or if it's a bot or a part. Here I have two parts in my workspace. I have a ball and a yellow platform. I'm going to go to my yellow platform. I'm going to add a script. And in my script, I'm going to start by declaring a local variable part equals to script dot parent. And then I'm going to add a touch event. So I'm going to say part dot touch colon connect to a function. And here. I'm going to add a parameter to my function. I'm going to add a part B. So basically, the touch event automatically pass in the part that is touching my main part. So my main part here is the yellow platform. And this is the other part that is touching the yellow platform. And in my function, I'm just going to go and print out that part. So I'm going to print out part B. Actually, I'm going to print out the uh, name property of that part. So I'm going to print out part B dot name. As you can see here, I have opened up my output window and let's play and take a look. So immediately as I enter the game, you see there's already three parts that is touching my yellow platform. I got the base plate touching my yellow platform, right? That, that's because the yellow platform is sitting on top of the base plate and the red ball is touching my yellow platform a few times. That's because the red ball is on top of my yellow platform. And also there's a handle that's touching my yellow platform. And now if I run across the yellow platform, you can see all my parts, my left foot, my right upper leg, uh, a lot of my parts are touching my yellow platform. So now let's go back to the script and I'm gonna make a change to it. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a sound file to my yellow platform. And I'll go to my home menu tab, toolbox. We're gonna search for a crashing sound, a crash sound. I'll I'll just pick the first one here. So we'll right click, copy asset ID, go back to my sound file. Let me close this, this output window. And I'm gonna put I'm gonna put the sound ID into the sound ID property. I'm gonna paste it in. Let me just play to verify. Okay, that's the right file. And now I'm just gonna go in here and I'm gonna instead of printing I'm gonna play that sound so I'm gonna say part dot sound colon play I'm gonna wait for one second and then I'm gonna destroy the part Whoop. let's say part first part colon destroy and that should do it now let's play and test So as soon as I enter the game, the other parts already destroy my yellow platform. It's either the red ball or the, the base plate because they're, they're touching my yellow platform. So they, they destroyed the yellow platform before I was able to get there. I wanted to be the one to destroy the yellow platform, but they, they got to it before me. So now how do we make a change so that this yellow platform is only destroyed if a player touches it and not the other parts, not the base plate or the ball touching it. So in order to do that, we need to check this part that is coming into our function, passing into to our function. We need to check to see if this part belongs to a humanoid. A 
a humanoid is a player. So in order to check for a humanoid, I'm going to put in an if statement. I'm going to say if part b dot parent. So I'm going to go to the parent of part b. Because remember, the part that touches the yellow platform is like, it's like part of my leg or my foot. It's not my character. So I want to get my character. So going to the parent would give me the, the whole character, the whole player. Right? And then I'm going to do a colon, find first child. So now I'm looking for the child of the character. If it's a player, it would have a child named humanoid. So I'm looking for humanoid. So if, if it's found, then I'm going to do this part where I play the sound and I'm going to destroy the part. Let me reformat this. So basically, if it's not found, it's going to return a nil. This find first child function, it's going to return nil if humanoid is not found. And basically, nil is the same as false. So if it's returning nil, this if statement is going to be skipped. It's not going to it's not going to do what's inside the if statement. So if it's found, then it's going to become this part is going to become like true and then it's going to do everything inside the if statement. Let's play to test. So there you can see that the, uh, the yellow platform is still there. The ball is touching it, but the, the ball is not destroying it. And the base plate is touching it. And the base plate is not destroying it. Now, I just want to show you something. If you go to my workspace here, right? Or if I go to my workspace, I'm going to see my character has been added to the workspace. So at, when I press play, as I, I enter the game, my character is automatically added to the workspace and if you look under my character you're gonna see humanoid so that's what we were looking for we're, we're looking for this humanoid to determine if my character is a player and if you look further down you're gonna see like my head my left foot my left hand and all the other parts that that was touching the yellow platform when we were printing it when we were printing it out before and here is my humanoid root part. All right, so now I'm going to go and I'm going to touch the yellow platform. And it, it's gone. It's destroyed. Because I, I am a humanoid. I am a player. So that is how you check to see who is touching a part and whether the person touching the part is a humanoid in Roblox.